Have you ever wanted to show your students some proof of how atoms have charge and how we know that? Well, there's a neat little lab called Sticky Tape Lab where you can use things like 3M Scotch tape, plain paper, and regular aluminum foil to show that particles of matter do have charge in them. For our lab, we're going to need some 3M Scotch tape. You have to get that kind because no other kind really works with this lab. And we are going to just get on a tabletop here, these pieces of tape, and we're going to put up this diagram and we're going to show you how to build it up close. And then we're going to get some foil, which is represented by the F, some paper, the P, and then the top piece of tape and the bottom piece of tape. So F for foil, P for paper, T for top tape, B for bottom tape. So let's build the display right now. All right, so you'll need some 3M tape and you'll cut some pieces of just regular paper and some aluminum foil, the regular kind, not the heavy duty. And what I do is I just cut enough for everybody and I'll just keep it stored in a baggie and I'll keep it uh, and use it every semester, reuse it and collect it. So what you want to do is build the tape base here. So you're going to pull a piece of tape. We're going to kind of roll this back so that we make a little tab. And I'm going to mimic the diagram that we put up there. So this is called the base tape. And you see it's got a little edge sticking up here. All right, now we're going to pull another piece of tape. I'm going to pull it just a little bit shorter. I'm going to curl the ends of it up as well, but just one end. I'm going to put the little tab that's sticking up opposite of the other one. This one's now called my bottom tape. So the first one was the base tape. The second one is the bottom tape. I'm going to pull a third piece of tape and I'm going to make this one just a hair shorter than the other two. We're going to curl the end of it up as well. And then I'm going to offset it so that it's sticking up that I can tell that it's separate from the bottom tape. This one's called the top tape. I'm going to rub it and make sure it's down really well. You're going to need two of these, so let me set this up again. And also, I found that when you ask the students to do it and they look at that diagram, even though you've got that diagram up and I'm talking them through it and making the one with them as they do it, it takes probably 10 or 15 minutes for them to get this down and do it twice. So. If I don't have time, I will go ahead and get these set up for the students. So I will build both of them for them either the day before or that morning because I have planning in the, in the morning. But uh, if you need it to speed up, then go ahead and have them prepared already for them. And then you can get all this done in about five or seven minutes instead of about 20 All right, so I've got two setups. Now, on the edge of the table here, I'm going to have a piece of foil. And then don't tape them too close together. I'll get a piece of this regular plain paper. Alright, so now we have our base tape, the bottom tape, the top tape. We've got double setups of those. With one hand, we'll get the bottom tape and we'll pull it off so that it and the top tape come off simultaneously. And then it, you'll see it says a charge because it's attracted to my hand, so we want to ground it. So just Put it between your fingers and rub up and down through there a couple of times. Okay? 
All right, so the bottom tape is in my left hand. I'm going to come here and get the top tape with my right hand. And just like you're ripping a Band-Aid off of somebody real quickly, just rip the tapes. All right, so we've got bottom tape in left, top tape in right. All right, so we're going to stick the bottom tape here. And the top piece of tape right here. So we have foil, paper, top, bottom. All right, I've already pulled the bottom and top tape off simultaneously from our second setup, and I'll go ahead and ground it. And once again, I'll get the top tape and rip it away from the bottom tape. I'll put the bottom tape over here momentarily. All right, we'll put the top tape to the foil, and you see, wow, they're really attracted. The paper is also bending out to the top tape. This top tape is repelling the other one, as you see it getting pushed back. But the bottom tape bends out to meet it. So we have attract, attract, repel, attract. We get the bottom piece of tape. It is also attracted to the foil. And the paper is also attracted to the bottom piece. The top piece is attracted to it, but the two bottom pieces repel each other. So we have attract, 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 repel. All right, paper to foil, nothing. Paper to paper, nothing. Paper to top tape, attraction. Paper to bottom tape, attraction. Foil to foil, nothing. Foil to paper, nothing. Foil to top tape, attraction. Foil to bottom tape, attraction. All right, let's summarize what we just saw in our experiment. First of all, foil to foil had no attraction, so we're going to put a zero there. Foil to paper had no attraction, so we're going to put a zero there also. Foil to top did have an attraction, so we're going to put an A for attraction. And foil to bottom piece of tape also had an attraction, so we're going to put an A there as well. Paper to foil had no attraction, so we're going to put zero. Paper to paper had no attraction, so zero. Paper to top, that did have an attraction. And paper to the bottom piece of tape also had an attraction. Top to foil had an attraction. Top tape to paper had an attraction. However, top piece to top piece repelled and top to bottom piece attracted. Bottom to foil attracted, bottom to paper, attracted, bottom to top, attracted, and bottom to bottom, repelled. Alright, we can break down the table here and look and pull out some information about the structure of the atom that using a simple piece of tape, paper, and foil can tell us. Alright, so the first part of the story is right here in this section. Now we're familiar in daily life that magnets will, certain ends of the magnet will repel and certain ends of the magnet will attract. And we know that those ends of the magnet are oppositely charged. So we see here that top to top is repelling. So that tells us that the top tape has the same, has a light charge there. And the bottom to bottom is repelling. So it also has a light charge. However, top and bottom must be oppositely charged because they attract each other. So we can make the assumption here that the top tape and bottom tape are both ch oppositely charged. So one's positive and one is negative. Which one is which really doesn't matter right now. All right, we've got a second piece of evidence right here. 
and we see that the foil is a metal, the paper is a non-metal. And we see that a metal is attracted to the top tape, which we said, for instance, is positive, And the bottom tape is, for instance, negative. So the foil metal is attracted to both of them. Same thing with the paper, the non-metal. It's attracted to both a positive and a negative charge. So the assumption we can go over here is that foil and paper have both charges in them. All right, and our last piece of evidence that we're going to use is right here. Where we see that the foil and the paper, even though we just established that they have positive and negative charges in them, they do not attract themselves, nor do they attract each other. And the reason for this is that the foil and the paper must have the same number of positives and negatives to make them neutral. Alright, so that leads us now into a discussion about the Thompson model of the atom, which you recall is the plum pudding model, where J.J. Thompson found that the electron was actually the mobile particle, so the negative particle is what traveled from one piece of tape to the other, and that he did that through his cathode ray experiment too. Cathode ray experiment, and that he came up with the plum pudding model which said that there were equal numbers of positive and negative charges but they were just randomly dispersed through the atom. We're going to... All right, now that we know that there are positive and negative particles in the atom and there are probably equal numbers of positive and negative particles in all atoms, we're going to look at the foundation for the J.J. Thompson model which is the plum pudding model where he said that there were positive and negatives in the atom just randomly dispersed through there. We're going to put some links below this that will give you some other videos that are on YouTube that will give the more information about this particle model that J.J. Thompson came up with. Mm -hmm.